I think having a wireless experience is, is really, really helpful. And, you know, it, it, it's a lot more fun to play games when you don't have to worry about the wire. Tell us about the journey of developing this. When did you first start with VR? I started in 2014, uh, back when uh, Oculus got acquired by Facebook. That's when it kind of piqued my curiosity, and that's when I started uh, developing in VR just for fun, like as a hobby on a side project. You got a dev kit before that, right? Yeah, I got a DK1 um, before the DK2 launch, and then when the DK2 arrived, I got one, and I, I started uh, developing the PC version of the app back then. So explain what virtual desktop is. What is the app and why did you settle on building this? Uh, well, virtual desktop is an app that essentially lets you use your computer while you're in VR. I was kind of surprised when I, I saw the dev kit and I saw, oh, okay, it's hooked to a computer with an HDMI cable. So I was thinking, you know, automatically you'll see your computer, but then I realized, oh no, it only works with games and the games have to be launched on PC. You have to put the headset on. And then when you exit a game, you have to put the headset off and then go on your computer, launch another game. I thought, this doesn't make sense. Like there has to be a better way to, you know, do things. So at the time, there was no Oculus Home, there was no Steam VR. There was just like individual apps that you had to launch one by one and take the headset off every time. So, so the idea came from a use, usability perspective where I wanted to make it um, more streamlined to use VR. How early on did you sort of assume or figure that the big companies would be building something similar to what you're working on? Um. Well, actually, at first, I seemed to be the only one working on something like that. And then when I released my app, uh, at the time, it was, uh, you know, people just released their demos in the, in the Oculus forums and people downloaded them. And my app became very, very popular and everyone was talking about it in the community. So uh, at that time, I thought, okay, somebody's going to copy what I'm doing and do something similar. But it took a really long time before that happened. Um, I think probably a year after I started working on it, I think Big Screen did something similar. And, and then Oculus decided to develop their own thing for the, uh, the Rift. And of course, there's desktop mode in SteamVR. The, the desktop mode in SteamVR is not hugely usable. I, would, I think that would be a nice you know, a, yeah, it's very way limited. of saying it. Virtual desktop initially was only uh, the ability to see your desktop, use your mouse keyboard, and essentially do what you normally do on your PC. But then as I kept working on it, I added more features. So it does a lot more than just use your desktop. You can, uh, it's also a 360 photo viewer, uh, a 360 video player, so you can watch 180, 360 movies. Um, and then it has voice integration for voice commands. It has custom environments. You can uh, create your own environments and import them in the app. Um, so it has a tons of features which uh, Oculus and Valve still haven't really uh, integrated. They did some some similar things, um, but none of them has the, the capabilities that the PC app today have. If you've got like an Oculus Go, for example, explain what happened with Oculus Quest. So you've got a very interesting sort of path to market that not a lot of other developers have. What happened with Oculus Quest? Well, the, the mobile version, which I started a little over two years ago, was a complete rewrite from scratch because uh, my app is built um, against a native SDK for Oculus and OpenVR. So when I developed the mobile version, it was specifically for the Go and upcoming Quest. So it streams your desktop to your uh, headset wirelessly. And it did really well on Go, and then I was really happy to, to get it released on Quest. But one of the features everyone uh, wanted on, on Quest was like, well, since you're connected to your computer, why can't you stream VR games to it? And then, well, it didn't make a lot of sense. So I, I looked into it and then I started working on that. And, and it turns out that it, it actually works really well for remote rendering. So that means you run the game on your PC and then you can play it wirelessly to the headset. So I released this. Uh, for the Quest a few weeks after after the, the headset released. 
And what happened? What what happened next? Uh, well, Give me the blow by a, blow. <laughs> okay, it's a bit of a controversy. So what happened is that I released it, but I didn't announce it publicly. I just put it in. I hope people find it and just get some feedback on, on the functionality. But then Oculus uh, uh, learned about that feature and they weren't happy. They didn't want me to put it in the official version that's on the store. So they forced me to remove it. So I had to... Uh, um, make it available on SideQuest. So that's what I did. I, I The feature is still there today, but you have to sideload the version from SideQuest to be able to play VR games, to stream VR games. Wirelessly. And now, wirelessly, yeah. yeah. And now with well, Oculus, they essentially copied the feature with the link with the cable. So uh, now you're able to do it in a wired officially, and you can do it unofficially wirelessly with virtual desktop. Explain the latest update here. What has changed? Because you've you've added a new way of doing it. The latency seems to be fairly low. Um, mm -hmm. Can you explain what's changed and, and what the new feature is? Previously, the way it worked is um, it worked through a custom driver in SteamVR. So SteamVR has an API for headset manufacturers to create a driver for headsets like Windows Mixed Reality, or Pimax or anything. So I, I use that API to make a driver for the Quest. So that allowed you to play Steam VR games uh, and stream them to the Quest. Uh, the issue with this approach is that a lot of the game PC VR games today are meant to run either with the Oculus SDK or through Steam VR. So they have a lot of assumptions about input, about what headset you have. So a game that runs uh, in open VR, sometimes we'll just assume you have a, a Vive, and so you'll see uh, Vive ones in your hands. So it didn't really match, and the input didn't always work. So uh, what I did in this new version is I essentially re-implemented the entire Oculus runtime. And now when you launch games through a virtual desktop, it uses my runtime instead of the Oculus one. So it, games will think that it's running on a Rift S, they will have, you know, be no different for, for the game, but I will be able to stream uh, to the to the Quest. So by going through an emulated runtime, Oculus runtime, this uh, solves a lot of compatibility issues that, that we had in the past. 20 milliseconds is considered the threshold for comfortable VR generally uh, for, for a very wide selection of people. Uh, lots of people don't need 20 milliseconds of latency. Some people can feel pretty comfortable with a fair amount of latency, so the number could be larger. But this mm -hmm. is the idea that when you make a movement in VR, it's going to take less than 20 milliseconds for that movement to reach your eyes. So I was observing, as I tested this, around 35 milliseconds on an AC router. Does that yeah. sound about what people could expect on a good router and a good sort of line of sight what, what what do you think people at home will will experience with yeah, this yeah you should get around between 30 and 40 milliseconds for most games if you have um, a good gpu so it also depends on the gpu you have because uh, newer nvidia gpus will be able to compress the image to video faster than older gpus but the most important like you mentioned is the router uh, because network latency is a big uh, um, is the big elephant in the room here. Not all routers are created equal and not everyone has an ideal environment for Wi-Fi signals. So if you have like multiple walls between you and your router, if you have a lot of devices connected to it, this can impact the, the quality of the experience. So with prediction, you can minimize the apparent latency and the latest version, since it doesn't go through Steam VR, it actually does a better job of predicting um, your position and all that. So it, it should feel a lot, um, very, very similar to Link in terms of latency. Carmack made a mm -hmm. comment, I believe, in one of his keynotes where he alluded to the idea that there could be such a thing where you've got a dedicated Wi-Fi dongle that you plug into your computer and then that sort of manages this Link and makes sure there isn't that congestion issue um, mm -hmm. and it would be more or less a wireless version of Link. Are you concerned about that? Well, how will that affect you if that happens? I think having a wireless experience is, is really, really helpful. And, you know, it, it, it's a lot more fun to play games when you don't have to worry about the wire. So um, I'm glad if they work on something like that. Um, I don't think it affects me too much because my app is, uh, you know, the VR streaming feature is just the side 
part of the app, right? The the entire ability to connect to your computer and then to watch movies or to work or browse the web is still super useful and no one else has an app like that at the moment on the store. So what is the market penetration for you on Quest? What is the size of the market and how many people do you think you're reaching with your app? Um, if I look at the top selling apps, it's usually in the top 12 around that. So it's doing very well, and um, I'm very happy with how it's doing on Quest. The Quest is probably the top selling headset so far, even compared to PC VR headsets. So it's been really good uh, in terms of sales. Have you sold more units on uh, Quest than on PC? No, I've still sold more on PC because the app on PC has been there since uh, you know the PC headset launched uh, four years ago. So um, I still have more sales on PC total, but uh, the rate at which I'm selling on Quest is is uh, slightly higher than how it was on PC. And when I was on PC, I was probably in the top three or top four apps. Now I'm only top 12, I guess, because not everyone has a PC, obviously, when they buy a, a mobile head, headset. Interesting. The rate is faster than it was on PC, and that's been consistent since you launched. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty consistent. The, the Christmas rush was a little crazy because a lot of people got a quest at Christmas, uh, <laughs> so the support there was uh, was a lot of work, but uh, it's stabilizing right now. It's doing pretty well. Latency, I'm fairly sensitive to, but when I got the latency to 35 or 30, it felt really solid. Um, mm-hmm. You know, almost native is the way I would mm-hmm. put it in. That's such a scary thing to kind of say to people because some people that would be just unusable. Um, Mm. Other people could handle quite a bit more latency than that and be completely fair. How many people do sort of, I guess, in your community of people who actually use this feature, who, to to be clear how it works, is you you buy the game or buy the app from Oculus Facebook and then have to use SideQuest, which is a side-loading piece of software, to mm-hmm. download what is essentially a patch to modify the app and yeah. make it available to do PC VR streaming wirelessly. So sure. how many people are doing that and how comfortable is it for them? I just see a number of downloads on the SideQuest page, which is publicly available. It's it's the second most popular app on SideQuest. So um, people's experience, I mean, it... It depends on the game and it depends on how good their network setup is. A lot of people use the app for um, um, games where you're going to be sitting or you won't move too much. And it's really good for that. So even if you have slightly more latency than if you were wired with a PC VR headset, it's not that noticeable. Boneworks, maybe a little harder. So you might, you know, it might not be for everyone because you you will notice it a little more. And if you have any um, any spikes in your latency, then you're gonna notice the you know the the hiccups a little more. What's your favorite headset, and what do you spend the most time in these days? Uh, it's definitely the Quest. Um, I mean, well, for me, it's mostly because of comfort. I, I right now I'm wearing the Rift S, but I don't like the Halo band, and I, I just find it super uncomfortable. It doesn't. Uh, sit right on my face so the quest for me is the most comfortable one even though it's front heavy i find it more comfortable but for development purposes i much prefer the mobile headsets compared to the pc vr ones i know i'm gonna get a lot of hate from the (laughs) the pc vr folks but um just developing on a on a headset with um when you know um, the hardware everyone's gonna have the same hardware it's a lot easier than developing on windows where there's a lot of things that can go wrong or a lot of apps that can interfere or um, a lot of different hardware that it can cause issues. Um, So it's it's a lot easier to troubleshoot problems on mobile headsets because you have the headset, the user has the headset. It's going to be exactly the same. How do you think about development to the future? Are there prototypes rolling around that you've toyed with that are not virtual desktop or are you going to be working on virtual desktop in 2025? So far I've been focusing on virtual desktop and I, I have a lot of ideas for, for features to add. So I think for the next few years, I'm definitely going to stick to that. Um, yeah. And if I have ideas for other apps, I, I, I'm always thinking of how can I integrate them into the existing version of virtual desktop. So one thing that uh, people might know is that um, 
yes, I released the app, but I keep improving it every time. So I release updates, you know, almost on a monthly basis. And I try to add features and make it more useful. I've done the same with the PC version for like four years almost. Uh, I spend less time on PC these days. Um, so my time is spent on mobile. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to be working in VR for, for quite a few years. Given that you sort of like got serious when Facebook acquired, can you explain that? Explain to me that 2014 thinking of Mm. whether it was a risk and why you thought then was the right time. Well, at the time, I, it was just uh, for fun. I saw there was a dev kit. I said, oh, I'm going to try it. And I had some free time. And so I'm going to just try to develop an application. And I had no idea that I would be working in the VR the future. I was just, you know, just experimenting and just seeing how the tech was. And I kind of got hooked uh, into the first demos and all that. I thought, wow, this is really the future. I have to... To develop on that and even then i i still had my regular day job and i still um you know um only worked on this during evenings and weekends but it's as the app became more popular that's when i started to really think oh maybe actually i could not i could start selling it on on steam or make it available for you know and even then i didn't think i would work in vr and full-time so i started selling my app and i was still working i was working at 2k at the time and uh but then the sales were really good so i thought oh maybe actually i could start doing that full time and that's that's what i decided to do uh two years ago two and a half years ago not necessarily a great time uh relatively speaking for the vr market i mean there was a lot of a lot of die off i would say during mm -hmm. that period so i mean right right when a lot of people were going out of business, running out of investment right. money was when you were able to focus on this full time. Do you think that's, yeah. uh, I wonder if that's, can that be extrapolated to other devs? I, I know a lot of indie devs and it's really hard um, to sell games because there's a lot of games and it, it's it's probably harder to compete in the, uh, in the game space rather than the app space because there's not a lot of app developers there's some um you know there's scope vr there's uh you know uh, more independent develop developers that are working on games than on apps so probably going the app route is probably uh, um i'd say more of a market do you see there being a market in mobile larger than just facebook for virtual desktop do you think there's going to be more uh more competitors for you to put your product on? You know, the, the Go is an excellent uh, heads, entry-level headset, and now the Quest is so popular that it's hard for me to imagine a, a new player coming in and selling a headset and competing with the Quest, honestly. Um, I mean, they're probably selling it at a, a loss or very, very little um, profit. So most companies, unless they have their own app store, like maybe Vive, then they have to make money from selling the headset and that means it's going to be much harder to sell them. So, so far I don't have any other, um, headsets that I'm planning on developing for. I'm looking, um, you know, at other headsets from other companies, but I don't have anything to, you know. uh, you're not on Vive focus, right? No. And no. you never released on daydream. Well, there's not a, a market and I mean, releasing on daydream or Vive is a lot of work. Uh, Unity and Unreal make it much easier to target different platforms. Where in my case, it's it's a lot of work because it's using the native SDKs. So when I started developing the mobile version, I looked I looked a bit at Daydream, but my thought when I looked at the platform was that nobody's developing for that. It's kind of dead. So I said that's probably a waste of time if I w went down that road. So. That's why I focused on uh, on the Go because it you know it had a potential market. Gear VR already was there, and it had a good library of games. And uh, thank you so much for the time. Is there anything else about virtual desktop that you think everyone out there needs to know? Just go try it out, and and if you have any feedback, let me know. I'm always improving the app. So uh, big thanks to all the the folks on my Discord who have been uh, testing. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a fun interview. Thank you so much.